Hello and welcome to Sociology again. Last time we explored foundational theorists and this day we are going to look at foundational theories. So there are three foundational theories, but before we get into that, I want you to take out a notepad. You won't have to turn this in, this is just for your own helpful studying. And I want you to quick think of as many theorists as you can remember. So pause this video. I want you to take 30 seconds and just try to write down and remember as many theorists as you can remember. Welcome back. Okay. Great job. So next we're going to look at functionalism. Functionalism is one of our three foundational theories. So it looks at how the functions of society. So as sociologists, we're not as clever as we think we are. So we are going to, when we look at these foundational theories, really just break them down in the what they say, their actual words, right? So functionalism, how society functions. So the theory that, um, anyway, so the theory that identifies social institutions and processes in society exists to serve some important or necessary function to keep society running. So these functions may be manifest or latent. Make sure that you understand and are able to remember the definition, not only of functionalism, but of manifest and latent. So manifest is explicit, latent is hidden. So manifest are the things that we expect to happen and latent are the things that we don't expect to happen. So functionalism, this video is also on D2L so you can study it and watch it. It is required for this week's homework. You need to make sure to watch this functionalism video. Our next is conflict theory. So the basic idea of conflict theory is that conflict between competing interests is basic, animating force of social change in society in general. So conflict theory looks at the conflict that is created between groups of people and how that has propelled social change or how that um, has led to inequality within our existence. So this is competition, not consensus. So inequality exists as a result of political struggle, struggles among different groups in a particular society. Make sure to watch the conflict theory video. Feminist theory. So within feminist theory, it is a branch off of conflict theory because feminist theory identifies that there's an um, unequal distribution of rights and resources to the various genders. Really, even though feminist theory does get a bad rap, predominantly feminist theory looks at how we have an experience inequality among the genders and how we can explore a more equitable and equal representation of gender within our society on a lot of facets, right? Many people think that feminist theory is about women being in the position of power and that um, they dislike men, but in reality, men can be feminist allies just as much as the female identified body can be feminist. And um, feminist theory really looks at the inequality among genders and how to start to rectify that. So it shares many ideas with Marxism and emphasizes the equality between not only men and women, but all genders, and wants to see women's lives and experiences represented in sociological studies and national global discussions. So we have the Women's Liberation Movement. Make sure to watch the video on feminism. Symbolic interaction is the last one of the three foundational theories. It is a micro-level theory in which shared meanings, orientations, and assumptions from basic motivations behind people's actions. So again, looking at um, cultural scripts and um, symbolic interactionism, that is what we're looking at, cultural scripts and linguistic landscapes. How do we create meaning within our environment and each other? And then how does that then influence our own ideologies and beliefs and our actions? So you have postmodernism, which is a condition characterized by a questioning of the notion of progress in history, the replacement of narrative, um, with appropriation and multiple, perhaps even conflicting identities resulting from disjointed affiliations. So I know this is a lot, so let's break it down. Basically the best way that I can understand explaining postmodernism is that nothing is truth and truth is everything. So my own reality has just as much validity and importance as your reality, even if they are of the exact same experience, but we may have interpreted those experiences differently. And again, it goes back to the sociological imagination and the sociological lens of how our own interpretations can, um, our own frameworks influence how we interpret things. Does that make sense? So everything 
is important and everything is valid and we need to witness and understand everything, but we also need to question this idea of progress and question history and question um, all of these things that we have come to think of as common sense. Cool? All right, so within postmodernism identifies social construction. Social construction is a key term that you need to make sure that you are very well aware with. It is something that we will utilize throughout the entire semester. Uh, social construction is an entity that exists because people behave as if it exists, and those existence is perpetuated as, pe as people and social institutions act in accordance with the widely agreed upon formal rules or informal norms of behavior associated with that identity. Oof, right? Mouthful. So within a social construction, break, break, it down, break it down again, right? So it is constructed by society. So it is any idea that we have come up with as a society, and it continues to exist because we believe it does. Does that make sense? So our government exists because we believe it does and we act in accordance to that. Does that make sense? Race and ethnicity exist because we created it and then we continue to behave as if it is something, right? It is a social construction, but it is something that we as a collective made up together and that we continue to buy into it. Does that make sense? The idea of uh, gender is a social construction, right? Gender hasn't always existed the way it has in its history. Do we follow so far? Think of money in and of itself. Money in all reality is a piece of paper. But because we all agree that it means something, that we can trade it and give it back and forth to each other and that it represents some sort of value within symbolic attractionism, it takes meaning. It has meaning, right? If I didn't believe in what this idea of currency, if you were to give me a dollar bill, would it mean the same thing? No. But because we as a society buy into it, it then perpetuates itself. Okay, so then we have mid-range theory, which is a theory that attempts to predict how certain social institutions tend to function. And then we have our theory drag and drop table. So again, um, we have explored various types of sociological theories, but the three foundational ones that I want you to focus on for Sociology 101 is the theory drag and drop table within functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactionism. Those are our three main theoretical constructions, right? So I have included the hyperlink underneath this video. Click on it. It will also go to the discussion board. So you need to look at all the three different types of the foundational theories and identify for your own existence in life which one of these theories would best fit you. For your own project, semester, paper, one, which one of these theories would fit best with how you're looking at your particular topic. You can use any of the other theories as well, postmodernism, mid-range theory, feminism, there's tons of other theories. If you've looked at the sociology family tree, you will also see that there are lots of other theories as well. We have queer theory, um, we have lots of different theories. You may use those as well, but I need you to at least identify one of the three foundational theories. Cool? All right. And then that is it, and we will review next time I see you. Have a great weekend, and I can't wait to talk to you later.